What is up Flutter devs? Today in our continuing port of processing to Flutter, we're going to very quickly implement the random function for processing in Flutter. Let's go have a look. Here we are in the docs as usual. Now you might wonder, why are we going to implement a random method? We already have a random object that already does random things. This is one of those cases though, where this behavior, this random behavior in processing is used so often that one, I would like for it to look pretty similar to what processing developers are used to, but two, I want it to be readily accessible rather than have to kind of arbitrarily or, or ad hoc instantiate a random object. And then you have a bunch of different versions of the random call that you can make. Let's just provide the one call that pretty much everyone in processing is used to and make it really easy to get to. Here on the screen, you'll see the specification for random. Here's the random function. There are a few examples here of the function in use. You'll notice here it takes one argument. Here random takes two arguments. Uh, and then down here, this is just showing still one argument, but it's showing a, a value that's taken from somewhere else. Let me very quickly read you through the description because every, every random function in every language and framework is a little bit different. So the random function in processing generates random numbers. Each time the random function is called, it returns an unexpected value within the specified range. If only one parameter is passed to the function, it will return a float between zero and the value of the high parameter. For example, random of five returns values between zero and five starting at zero and up to, but not including five. If two parameters are specified, the function will return a float with a value between the two values. For example, random negative five to 10.2 returns values starting at negative five and up to, but not including 10.2. To convert a floating point random number to an integer, use the int function. Of course, in Dart, we would just say to int on a double. That's easier than having a function. Uh, but the point is we can take in either one argument or we can take in two arguments. When we only have one argument, we're finding a value between zero and that number exclusive. If we pass in two arguments, we're finding a number between the low, the first value and the second value exclusive. Now, interestingly, it didn't mention what happens if you pass a larger number in as the low value. I guess we'll throw an exception in that case. Uh, so let's go back over here to our code and see where we want to begin with this. I guess as with everything else we've done, the right place to start is a test. We have these existing groups of tests. If we look back very quickly at the overall specification, you'll notice there's an entire category called random, which means that it's probably appropriate for us to create a test group called random. Create that here. And for now, I'll simply call this random test. Now let's go ahead and write the code that runs the test as usual. We need a main method because a test file uh, in the world of Dart is nothing more than a generic Dart application. We'll create a group of tests. It will be called random. And then we will define a single test here which we will just call random after the particular method that we are testing. You'll notice a couple things here right off the bat. First of all, this is not test widgets and this is not test goldens. This is a regular Dart test. Although now that I think about it, even though we're just implementing random, we are implementing random in terms of a sketch. Like, so a sketch has random defined upon it. So this actually should be test widgets. I think we can get away with test widgets instead of test goldens. Uh, let me quickly show you the difference in the other file, if I can remember how to type. Okay, let's come back to, I don't know, shape. Open this up. And you will recall from earlier videos that we used test goldens. Test goldens is a, it, it is a test function, but it comes from the golden toolkit package. It is made specifically to set up certain preconditions and expectations for golden tests. Under the surface of test goldens is a widget test. If you kind of dig down in there deep enough, it is a widget test the way that we have a widget test right here. 
the test widgets method is part of Flutter. So Dart, Dart has the method called test, which has no knowledge of Flutter. Test widgets comes from Flutter. It is for testing Flutter UI things. And then there is uh, whatever I, I already forgot the name. Was it test goldens? Then there's test goldens, which comes from uh, the golden toolkit, which is specifically designed for golden tests, which you can do again. You can do golden tests in Flutter as is, but you would have to take a few more steps to do a golden test in Flutter using test widgets. In any event, here we are in this test. I guess we should, I'll go back here one more time because we can, we can take this widget tree, I think. Let's copy that widget tree over here. Now, obviously all of this arc stuff we don't want, but I copied it because we do want processing. And we do want sketch, and we should be able to do this with a simple sketch. As usual, we haven't implemented anything. We're just stating here what we want the test to look like. What we want to be able to do is say something like random value equals s dot random. Let's we can use we can you know use the example from back here, which I guess this one put in fifty. So let's just go ahead and put in fifty we would like for this to compile. And when this runs so that we can get a sense of what we're dealing with here, we will output the random value, print it to the console. So this is what we want to compile and run. Let's go back to our definition here for a sketch. I'm going to start a new group, start random again, based on the official API documentation. Uh, and then we, our random function returns a double. In processing, it said float. Floats are something in Java. What we have are doubles. We'll say random. We know that we're going to have at least one parameter. So that one is required, bound one, as in lower bound, upper bound. And we don't know whether this one's a lower bound or upper bound, so I'm calling it bound one. There is then a second parameter, which is bound to, and that parameter is optional. It may or may not exist. What we can do then is, so we can say, uh, final lower bound is equal to, uh, if bound to is not equal to null, then the lower bound is bound one, otherwise it's zero. If bound to is provided, it means we have both of these. If we have both of these, then bound one is the lower number and bound two is the higher number. If we don't have both, then we only have bound one, which means zero is the lower bound as per the documentation. Then we'll have the upper bound. So bound two is not equal to null, then it's bound two, otherwise it's bound one. Then we're going to say if upper bound is less than lower bound, we're going to throw an exception. Random lower bound must be less than upper bound. That solves the, uh, the ambiguity in the documentation in terms of one being smaller than the other. Now, given these two, uh, the upper bound and lower bound, we want to go ahead and generate a random number. Now, generating random numbers is a very common thing in processing. It's seemingly almost every sketch has random numbers. So rather than instantiate a random object inside of random, we can instantiate one outside of random. Like this. Um, by the way, I just realized that I made these ints. They should not be ints. They should be nums. Number meaning we take an integer or a double. So we take an integer or a double, but we return a double. And then we can say random next double. Now this is going to be a value between zero and one. 
in the range from zero inclusive to one exclusive. And that exclusive part is the same as what processing expects, so that's good. But what do we do with a number between zero and one to deal with, you know, to, to put it between lower and upper bounds? What we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply it by upper bound minus lower bound, and then we're gonna add the lower bound to it. This will give us a number between those two bounds with the upper bound exclusive. And then we will return this. I think, I think that's what we want. I'll save that and then let's run this test and see what happens. It compiles at least, no more red squiggly. Let's run the test. Flutter test, test, random, random test. It's taking a long time. Okay, there we go. Well, it's definitely a value between zero and 50. <clears throat> the question now is, in a test, how can we possibly assert anything about this value if it's random? I suppose we could just say, we could, we could assert that it's greater than or equal to zero and less than 50, but that's still, we, I think we can do better than that. And to get to that point, let's look at one more capability that processing provides, which is random seed. So random seed sets the seed value for random. By default, random produces different results each time the program is run. Set the seed parameter to a constant to return the same pseudo random numbers each time the software is run. So random numbers aren't really random. Random numbers are based on some initial seed value. If we seed our test, if we say s.randomseed0, it doesn't matter what we put in here as long as it's always the same. We give it the seed value, then the next random number that we get is always gonna be the same. We don't, at this moment, we don't know what it is yet, but once we run this one time, we can copy the number and we can make sure it's always the same. Let's see what we have to do to make this work. And this is already going to cause problems here with this random object because random is the thing that takes the seed. If we only ever have one, then we can't change the seed. So this already has to, this logic here already has to change. I'm getting ahead of myself. Random seed is going to take in a seed. Then we actually need to change this random. So instead of making it final, we will just, we'll make it a var. Actually, well, well, I'll give it a type. So random equals random. It's not final. We can instantiate a new one. What we will say here is random equals random with the seed. Now we've applied a seed to our shared random object. Anybody that calls random down here will apply this seed. Now this, I guess this assumes that we always pass in a seed. This raises the question, what happens when you no longer want a particular seed? It doesn't say here, but my guess is that you should be able to call this with null. Let's check this here. So this, uh, so this allows for a null value. The int question mark says an integer or null. So if we pass null in as the seed, null will get forwarded to random, and then random will create its own seed. So I think we're okay. If we ever want to undo random, we just pass in null. And I'm going to make that a comment here. Okay, sets the seed value for all random invocations to the given seed to return a natural seed value past null for seed. Now hopefully people won't be confused. Let's save this, let's come back here. Now this compiles, no more red squiggly. 
Let's see what number the test gives us this time. Forty one dot two seven various stuff. OK, let's run it again. Forty one dot two seven and stuff. So this is now the number we are always going to get, which means we can copy it and we can say expect random value to equal this. And now let's see if that test passes. Test passes. And just to be sure, what happens if this goes from one to two? Make a minor change and then make sure a test fails now. And the test failed. Good. You see here the, the two differences. So we will return that number to what it was. We will save that. We will run again to make sure the test now passes. And now we have support for random. Although I guess it would also be good to have one test in here. One test that tests the range. So negative 50 to 50. Again, we have to print it out because we don't know what it what it is with that seed of zero. We need to actually generate it and then we'll find out. And I actually have no idea what the implications of running this in a continuous continuous integration environment is. I don't know. I don't know where the algorithm for for the seed comes from. Hopefully giving it the same seed will give us the same output even on a CI server, but I'm not sure. In any event, we pass in negative 50, comma 50, and we get this number, 38 dot stuff. So I will say expect random value is now this. Let's see what happens. Test passes. We are all good. We now have random implemented in our port of processing over to Flutter. I'm sure we're going to make copious uses of random in our upcoming actual processing examples that we do. Like once we get enough functionality in here, we're going to start actually creating some visual examples with processing so that we can really exercise the APIs. And I'm sure we're going to use random a whole lot for that. So look for some of those examples to start popping up within about two to three weeks. In any event, random is done and I'll catch you in the next video.